Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Emmanuel, it's Keith Schillen from Sherdog. How you doing, man? Good, my friend. How about you? Excellent. Uh, so my first question I got to ask you is, there's three men left in this tournament, but it seems like all the talk are about A.J. McKee and Pitbull. Do you feel like you're being overlooked? Yeah, a little bit, but hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. So that's what I'm looking to go out and go do. Uh, they'll have that opportunity to see that, but only after I defeat both of them when this is when this Grand Prix is over. But first things first and last things last, is I'm taking this whole Grand Prix. Yeah, uh, Bellator rankings came out this week. Obviously, Pitbull was number one in the division, but AJ was actually ranked above you. What's your thoughts on that? Eh, I kind of figured. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, I'm fighting what I have ahead of me, the two best fighters in the world in this organization because they have two accolades that I don't. One being a champ champ and who has a win over me and has been the greatest fighter in Bellator history, number one pound for pound. And then the other longest win streak undefeated and look at what a star he's been in, uh, in Bellator. So you can't write a better story of me going out, avenging these losses that I had. One, this man who had a win over me in 2018 and the other, I lost the opportunity to take that uh, undefeated record for him in 2016. So a lot of people forget about that, that we were scheduled to fight many years ago. But now I know I'm on this platform. A lot more is on the line, and I'm grateful for it all. Yeah, speaking of that, you said you mentioned that you fought Pitbull. It was a, it was a much closer fight than a lot of people will remember. What adjustments do you think you have to make this time so that your hand gets raised? Believing in my greatness. I believe that first time around, it was just uh, obviously showcasing skill, but toughness, heart, will. And uh, I was waiting and just thinking uh, just a little too much. Never hesitate. Go out there, trust in your instincts and uh, using my spider sense, being the matrix matador and capitalizing on my openings. So when I know I can go out there and uh, get the stoppage, make it happen. If not, uh, do whatever it takes to get my hand raised, continue to just keep the dog on the leash or fight him on the inside, fight him on the outside, fight him at my pace, my range, my rhythm. And again, another one down, another one eliminated, and on to the final. Matthew? Hey, Emmanuel, this is Matthew Putterman from imamenus.com. How you doing, brother? Great, Matthew Putterman. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, man. You know, my first question is to you, how does it feel to be the first main event fight on Showtime? I'm blessed. I'm grateful to God. It's, it's go time. It's show time. Uh, you can't write a better story uh, at this. Everyone's been waiting so long for uh, Bellator to get uh, get started this year. And yeah, first one of the year on the Holy Week on Good Friday, man. So it's going to be a great Friday because he has risen and here we are. I get to turn my dreams into reality. You know, what's your biggest attribute as a fighter? Uh having such a great supportive background with so many people in Rufus Sport, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, all and in, in, in Illinois and now throughout all over the world. But every fighter's got, you know, their their tribe and their people and their supporters, their lovers, their haters, criticizers, people who judge them, etc. But uh, I'm just grateful for everybody who is not counting me out but counting me in and knows that uh, that that I can do this and they inspire me and motivate me, and I inspire and motivate and encourage them too, I, I hope. But uh, anyone who always helped believe you got to spread peace and love and akuna matata, man, and believe it in your greatness. And then we talk about a physical attribute and talk about gas tank. So my energy levels just never stop. And that's how I'll always be. And you can't stop. You can't stop, won't stop. Max? Hola, soy Max Morales, MMA Pit. Hola, Manuel, ¿cómo estás? Um, <laughs> mi, mi pregunta es que esa, esa última derrota que tienes es contra Patricio Pitbull y eso fue hace un poquito más de dos años y tres victorias después y, y después de estos dos años eh, es una revancha que tú tenías en mente y que estabas persiguiendo y qué esperas de esta pelea Sí, claro, pues espero la victoria, primero en gloria a Dios, pero uh, pues estoy muy agradecido que tengo esta oportunidad en esta plataforma, uh, en el Grand Prix, en ese estilo, este torneo que tenemos y pues estoy listo para, para vencerlo y al final. And let me uh, say it in English. <laughs> so my question was, um, your last uh, defeat was against Patricio Pitbull and two years after that and three victories later. So that was a fight, a rematch that you were pursuing 
throughout these two years? And what what are you expecting of this rematch? Nothing but greatness. It's going to be a great fight. I know he's going to come hard. He's going to want to come and get it. But I know I've learned the bow and arrow has got to be pulled back really far before it can be shot forward. And I'm excited to show him and the world on what he's taught me because he taught me a very valuable lesson. And praise God we're coming out with the victory. Thank you so much, Manuel. Gracias, hermano. All right, Nate. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so your path to success in your career was full of hardship. Uh, your Instagram Monday motivation post, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, you, you were sleeping outside the gym uh, in the Civic Coupe in the Honda. Uh, you're a very motivational guy. I just want to know how charged up are you to be back here for fight week with another shot at the title? Very charged up, man. I can go back around that time all those years ago. That's when I was watching Patricio Pitbull face Pat Curran in a rematch. And that's a, the still little humble blue collar baller here trying to make his dreams come true, driving an hour plus to and from the gym every day, sleeping in his car, sleeping in the parking lot, sleeping in the gym floor. And now here we are. That's why I say it's me just turning my dreams into reality. All those, uh, all those third shifters out there, all those dishwashers out there, this one's for you because that's where I've been at and that's where I know I've been wanting to be, uh, being on this platform and going out and turning my dreams into reality, knowing that one day all that hard work, all that sacrifice, all that suffering was, was going to pay off. Like Muhammad Ali said, suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. And that's exactly what I'm going to go out and go do. Thank you, sir. Charged up, like I said. Good luck on Friday. Of course. Augusto? Hey, hey, Manuel, do you hear me? Si, sí, claro. Oh, it's excellent. Um, Emmanuel, obviously you, you have already faced on, on 2018 and since then you're in a three-fight winning streak facing tough competitors. So I want to ask you, what have you learned and improved during these two and a half years? And what are we going to see on this Matador Sanchez that, that's different from the one of the, the, the first fight? Definitely more of the Matrix Matador and using his spider sense here, <laughs> trusting and believing in his greatness never hesitating, and I've upped my strength. Uh, I've upped my cardio. Some people think like, wow, how can you get even better cardio? Uh, you can. So in every area outside of MMA as well too, you have to stay sharp mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. As a, as a fighter, it takes a lot to get in there on any level. And I'm looking forward to showing him and the world on what he's taught me and how much I've grown in every which way. And I'm a, a lot more wiser now because of that loss. Damon Martin. Emmanuel, uh, kind of a two-part question. When you look back at that first fight with Pitbull, uh, obviously it's several years ago, but, but kind of from your perspective, what's the biggest thing you learned about him in that fight? And what's the biggest thing you learned about yourself in that fight? That I can take his best shots that I, I can handle his, his pressure, his, his speed, his ferocity, his tenacity. And now I know that I can really overwhelm him with mine. And of course he's grown. Of course he's rewatched our fight and uh, rewatched my old fights recently. And obviously we, it's like uh, just two lions staring across from a, a watering hole. Uh, go, right into, we knowing that we're gonna cross paths again. And I'm sure after this, after I defeat him, I know we will, we will meet again, but First things first is going to go out and show what he taught me in 2018. And I'm a much wiser fighter because of that. I'm a much stronger fighter. And whatever doesn't kill you just makes you stronger and smarter. So I've had to learn from that. As painful as it was and as difficult as it was, I was, I was motivated by him. He went out to, to defeat Michael Chandler and he became the champ champ. And he's been dominant and showed nothing but dominance ever since. So I'm excited. I'm fighting the best pound for pound fighter, the best champion Bellator's ever had. And I'm looking to go out and be on top. Last one for me, you know, when you look at Pitbull, since you fought him, he's obviously, as you mentioned, gone on to do some great things, the Chandler win, you know, Juan Archuleta, the things he's done. But do you feel like he's that much different of a fighter than the guy you fought a few years ago? Yes and no. I'll say Yes, because of course he had to evolve and he had to obviously get bigger, get stronger, get more explosive, et cetera, everything they needed to do, knowing that he was going to move a weight class up. And who knows what, we, what his plans were outside of that. And what if we had no idea prior to what was going to go on with this Grand Prix. But then when this Grand Prix got started, 
uh, I feel like his level of opponents, uh, all great fighters, but they didn't really force him to change his game too much in, in the sense that the way, what I bring to the table. So as great of a fighter he is, and those other great fighters as well too, uh, had the potential to beat him in maybe their ways and their thoughts and what their game plans, but they just didn't have the style to beat him. And I know I have the, the style and the ferocity and the gas tank to, to get my hand raised over him. Giancarlo? Hi, Manuel. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just one question for me. Uh, in terms of preparation for this fight, uh, do you find it more challenging uh, thinking, like, do you overthink things uh, because of the last fight, or do you find it more calming knowing that you've already shared the cage with him? I find it more calming because I've also been cage side for his last three fights, getting uh, that win over Michael Chandler, the win over Juan Archuleta, and recently the win over Pedro Caballo. So uh, I still see those holes and those gaps and those openings to where I know I can capitalize on and also need to watch out for so he doesn't leave my face a bloody mess. Uh, he taught me a very valuable lesson. And I, I know that me believing in my greatness and me growing and learning, uh, watching him in each of those bouts, and me learning and growing from each of my bouts as well, too, leading up to this moment uh, has what's propelled me and enabled me to evolve me to say that I can say what I'm saying right now. And I'm staying calm all the way through. I know what this man brings to the table. I know I'm fighting the best pound for pound fighter, the best Bellator champion in history. But I do also know that I can defeat him and I have the potential to be defeat him and I will defeat him. And that's exactly what I'm looking to go out and go do and turning my dreams into reality and onto the final. Santiago. Hola, Emmanuel. Greetings from Amsterdam, and thank you for the time. Greetings, my friend. Cheers. There are some big weeks coming up for Rufus Sport with three massive fight in, fights in just over four weeks. Could you share how the vibes are at the gym and what makes this gym so special, according to you? Uh, man, it's like the Bulls dynasty. That's how I feel. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. We're just going out to to kill the game and uh, every single one of us looking out to be world champions. And it starts with me. I'm excited to start the year off. He go in a few weeks, a uh, little after me. Then we got Sergio Pettis going in fighting for a world title. Uh, my other teammate, Anthony Pettis, his brother, you know, is in a, a world Grand Prix tournament style. Other teammate, Laura Sanchez, is in a world Grand Prix tournament style. And outside of them as well, too, I have my teammate Jordan Newman fighting on this card with me, like how we started uh, years ago as well, too, when I had my first or second main event uh, bout. And uh, Rafael Stotts fighting the same card as uh, Sergio Pettis on May 7th. So it's, it's the winning season. Uh, we had our drought. We had our rough time. Our, our, our fights were canceled. Our, the gym was closed down. Wisconsin was just going just a ruckus. It was, everything was, it was, was craziness, but we, we never lost hope. We never gave up. We stayed faithful. We stayed hungry. And now here we are, the whole team's ready to eat and we're ready to leave a big legendary thing going on for the team and each of us as fighters as well too for our careers and our lives. That is beautiful. Last one for me, Emmanuel. Your cardio is absolutely spectacular. In your last fight against Daniel Weichel, you weren't even breathing heavy in the, in the fifth round. Is that cardio coming from your Mexican roots? And how much would it mean to you, Emmanuel, if you could show the Mexican people that Bellator MMA belt? I mean, uh, the best ever. The first Mexican uh, Bellator featherweight champion there's has been. Uh, you cannot write a better story, especially going into someone who has a victory over him being on this platform, on this format. I love it. Uh, it, it just makes it that much better and that much sweeter than it was years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited to, to go out and show what uh, Patricio Pitbull has taught me and the wisdom and, and knowledge that I've gained from not only that fight, but also me wanting to stop Daniel Weichel. Didn't get my, my the stoppage how I wanted, uh, but I got to showcase a lot of other tools and weapons. And like you said, a nonstop gas tank. So yeah, that comes straight from La el Corazón, Pura Raza Mexicana, and through the Mexican power, just nonstop. Since I was a kid, I've always seen my parents work three, four, five jobs. It's a nonstop hustle, and that's all I've ever known. That's all I, uh, that's all I can do. I just, I can't stop, I won't stop, and I can't be stopped, and I won't be stopped. So I'm just, uh, I'm amazed Energizer Bunny, man. So I just, uh, I wanna just keep going and do whatever it takes to get my hand raised, whatever it takes to get the stoppage and to go out and be victorious. That's exactly what I'm gonna go out and do this Friday night. All right, we'll take a couple more here. Dana? Uh, hi, Emmanuel. You talked about the upcoming schedule for Rufus Sport Fighters. You missed out the boxing match that your teammate 
Ben Askren is going to be having in a couple of weeks. How, how could you possibly forget? Uh, Ben's doing his own Rocky style training. I don't know if you've been watching his videos out there, so I'm letting him be Rocky going out there with his own Mickey and his own peeps out there. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to spar with Ben or work with Ben that much, but our other coaches have. Uh, he's also been going to Freddie Roach's gym and other, uh, other big gyms and he's getting the work that he needs to, for himself, uh, to, to make this happen. But I'm excited, man. Uh, I can't wait for him to go out there and uh, prove to the world that even him as an MMA fighter who wasn't uh, that great or that dominant with his striking skill can still go out and shut up this big mouth over here who thinks he has striking skill over an MMA fighter. Uh, talk to me a bit about your faith. You mentioned uh, before that you were sleeping in your car. You were uh, really uh, struggling on your way to, to get to this point to be fighting for the, the world championship. At any point... Did your faith wane? Did you think, God, what are you doing here? Uh, talk to me a bit about, about that and how you kept, uh, how, you, how you maintained your faith through all of that. Oh, that's a great question. I almost want to tear up now thinking about it, man, because it takes me back to those days where I do remember uh, working uh, 11 hours straight and then needing to go to the gym and just having a five-shot Americano and just taking a quick five minute nap before I needed to drive to the gym and get ready for, you know, uh, the next fight or just training, even without a fight on the line, just knowing that I, I couldn't miss out on training because I, I want to get to this level. I wanted to be where I'm at. No sacrifice, no victory. And throughout that whole time, I said, just God, please just give me strength. Uh, that, that's all I pray for. And I just pray that I don't fall asleep on the road and have a car accident or anything like that. And, he, he is faithful. He is worthy. And I, I give all the, the glory and honor to God because he has kept me safe throughout this whole time. MMA is such a dangerous sport, but on top of that, needing to make the, 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 the ability to make it happen through training, through uh, trying to get sponsorships, through trying to get fights, through just keeping your health, through trying to balance your job on top of pursuing the dream of being a professional MMA fighter and being a world champion. I, I just, I just never lost hope. I just never gave up. And I just prayed every single second that I, that I had with any little injury or going broke or sleeping in my car, or sleeping on an air mattress or whatever it, it was that I was going through. I just knew I was like, it, it's trying to teach me something. He is trying to teach me something. And no matter what, I know the, the risk, the, the pain, it, it will be worth it in the end. And I'll, I'm here on this platform now being able to share that with you and everyone in this room and everyone in the world watching that with God, all things are possible and just never give up. Believe in your greatness and with God, all things are possible, man. Just trust. Steven, how many shots of espresso in your, are in your Americana these days? Uh, I, I got to tone it down, man. This is why... Uh, this is for all the haters out there. People think Bellator fighters, oh man, everyone's out there, they're all roided up. The only thing you'll find in me is Mexican steroids, beans and rice. And the only things I go overboard with is, uh, yeah, coffee and sugar. But I got to limit that too, because unfortunately I have diabetes that runs in my family. And yeah, two drugs that I know for sure, caffeine and sugar that I got to watch out. But no, not too many shots, just a, 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 just a plain dark roast with a little <laughs> bit of, you know, raw sugar or some hazelnut, some some good roast. Starbucks, man, it always just whatever. Or Mexican style cafe. Oh, yeah, I, I don't hate. I'm a, I'm excited to try all kinds of coffees. Fighting in Israel, the first time I lost to Patricio, they had some great coffee while I was out there too. And every now and then, I'll enjoy myself a, a Celsius or a nice energy drink, a Zevia energy drink. I hope Zevia gets this and hooks me up with the endorsement like they do Mighty Mouse or Nate Diaz. But I've been trying. Zevia, they're, they're the best. They're, they're saviors from right there. Or green tea ginseng and green tea but i gotta tone it down i'm naturally energized right now i don't know if you can tell i'm cutting away i only have a few more pounds to go but i still can just be non-stop right here and talk your ear off for days but i'm ready to fight now man but i'm excited but this morning i did add one shot of espresso just to help the weight go down okay um so i wanted to expand a little bit on something that uh you were talking about earlier about uh askren um, can you remember a time, uh, a specific time in which you were striking with him or working on striking in, in which you kind of underestimated his abilities and, or maybe he surprised you in some way 
or did something that maybe you wouldn't have expected him to do? Well, I never underestimated him. Uh, I never underestimated anybody ever, no matter who they're from, or I have visitors and, you know, come from out of state, out of town, out of the country, uh, who have come into my beautiful Rufus Sport MMA Academy. There was one time I had five different English uh, accents, Australian, Irish, uh, German, or not German, but uh, uh, New Zealand. I had so many different guys that were in there at the time. But the first time I remember sparring with Ben Askren, he threw a spinning backfist at me. And I was like, what the? I thought for sure, I'm like, okay, I'm just getting ready for Ben to try to okay, move around with me, but try to take me down. Cause also I was, I'm way smaller than he is, but he threw a spinning back fist at me and was striking a little more than I expected. A lot of times uh, you think, you know, you're going to go with someone who's predominantly a wrestler or just wants to grapple you. They're probably just going to try to walk at you or grab a hold of you to just lock horns with you and take you down. But yeah, I was pretty surprised Ben Askren was throwing spinning uh, back fists at me and other jumping kick attacks and uh i wanted to show him that i didn't uh you know I, he has my respect and he was my coach at the time but i didn't care uh i tried to take him down and he threw me like on my head like i was a little kid but that was all good i i wasn't sure that this it was mma training uh and no matter what or who it is that i'm moving around with over all these years who i'm striking with who i'm grappling with mma jiu-jitsu wrestling whatever it may be uh, i'm always looking to obviously dominate and get, I don't want to say the better of the round, but you get what I'm saying. Like, show where my skill is at and learn and grow from that as well, too. And I, you have to, otherwise you're not going to get better. Did you watch the press conference between them? I did, and I think that guy's a punk. Uh, I think we should not make stupid people famous. I, I don't even know why he's considered famous. I don't know who he is unless other people have, have told me, but... Uh, I think people have uh, that, that title or that label of famous misconstrued. Um, someone famous to me would be like Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King on here, uh, Cesar Chavez, Rosa Parks. People have done great things, the great Muhammad Ali. You know, uh, people have done great things in uh, many different aspects in their lives. And what do we have here? Uh, from what I know, just a YouTuber who's boxed a, a basketball player and another YouTuber. And... It, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. You got funny videos on YouTube and you make money off of it and, or Instagram too or whatever. God bless you. If you can do that and make a lot of money or have a lot of notoriety and endorsements and great all that, I, I'm, I'm happy for you. But I don't think that he is anyone to be idolized or praised, uh, nor with Ben Askren. So I don't feel that way towards anyone. But uh, Ben, I feel, should have a little more uh, respect for what he's done and for who he's needed to face and what he's needed to go through in order to be in the position to where he is now, being able to not only get paid for, for this and being on this platform that he's, that he's on, but and that guy just seems a little bit like a punk to me. And uh, Ben is a true competitor and a true fighter. Uh, people are counting Ben out, I don't know why, but Ben's a true fighter. Whether it be boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, grappling, if it's a spitting contest, whatever it would be, Ben would show up and show you what's up. So that's that's what a fighter does. Last question here, Tony. Emmanuel, hope, hope you're well. Um, you, you got to avenge a loss in your, your last fight. How much did you learn from going into that fight as, as a rematch that you're going to be bringing into this fight on, on Friday? <sighs> Obviously, his strengths, his speed, uh, his stamina, his endurance, his everything, and my own. Uh, that was my first five-round fight. That was my first international fight. Uh, a lot was riding and going into that. I, I had a lot of, I feel like, maybe almost put too much pressure on myself being out there the first time flying that far across the world to, to be able to fight and fighting such a great champion and such a dominant fighter who's shown nothing but greatness throughout uh, his Bellator career. And now I know, I, I believe in my greatness. I showed my potential. I showed what I, I could do, but now it's time to really fully unleash and let it all out in there to do whatever it takes to get the stoppage or uh, five rounds of making sure that complete dominance that I get my hand raised. All right, Manny, thanks for the time today and good luck on Friday. Peace and love and kuna matata. you guys. Thank you. God bless.